Hello everyone and welcome to this new Privacy Rules podcast. Today we are going to discuss about COVID-19 and the related measures that uh, many countries are taking. In this case, I'm pleased to be here speaking with Kelly Dixon from McPherson Kelly uh, Law Firm and uh, to have from her a little overview on uh, what's going on and what they can do to, to help companies in, uh, in their country. So uh, let's start, Kelly, with a very general question. Uh, is going there, which are the key restrictions relevant for individuals and which are the advantages in terms of uh, public health and, and security. Hi there, Alessandro. It's good to speak with you again, uh, albeit under these very remarkable circumstances that everybody's living in at the moment. Um, here in Australia, uh, as of today, today's Friday here for us, we currently have just over 3,000 cases of COVID-19 that have been recorded. Um, since yesterday, in the last 24-hour period, there's been almost 370 new cases. We've just had 13 deaths as well. So compared to other countries, we're, I think, unfortunately, still at the very beginning of our curve. So where we're at at the moment, things are moving very, very quickly here. Uh, we're starting to get into our lockdown. A lot of businesses are now shutting. We're working from home. We've got social distancing rules that are in place and many, many businesses are now starting to suffer. There's obviously new information that's coming out from the government every single day with changes, but I do hope that we're able to draw on all of the uh, the measures that have been taken in other countries around the world to help reduce what's happening here for us. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Kelly, for this brief overview. And uh, always in general, with, which are the top priorities to be considered by, by companies in particular, in, in your view? Yeah, at the moment, I, it's very, very fast moving. But I think the biggest issue for many businesses in Australia, first of all, is their employees, um, you know, shutdowns of businesses or laying people off or reductions in pay. So um, those issues to do with employees and keeping the workforce going is a really huge issue at the moment. We're also seeing lots of issues in relation to landlords and tenants in relation to the rent that is being paid or whether there can be a freeze on rent. Uh, but what, in a positive way as well, I think we're starting to see some businesses change the way they do business. For example, a lot of our food manufacturing and food supply businesses are now shutting down. You can't go into a restaurant or a cafe now. So they're turning to takeaway food. And we're seeing a lot more online supply as people are at home needing to do something. They're wanting to buy things. And a lot of businesses are changing the products that they used to sell to now deal with this new um, reality that we have, I guess. So there's a lot of supply chain issues that will be coming about as well. Our government has also uh, been speaking about implementing some changes to our debt recovery and insolvency laws that will actually make it a lot more difficult to enforce debts for the next little while. So they're the, the really key commercial issues that we're seeing at the moment. Perfect, Kelly. Thank you uh, very much. I wanted to ask you uh, one question uh, I was interested in in relation to that. What if companies lose all the revenue due to the crisis? There's a few different measures that are being proposed by the government. And the first one is, as I said, that there is going to be some restrictions about the ability to take enforcement action for debt recoveries and insolvencies. The threshold for those are getting higher. In some instances, from $2,000 now up to $20,000 before you can take action. Our government has also been working with the banks to implement some small business relief packages as well. So there's been some changes to tax laws. We've had some changes to superannuation laws as well. And there's, in the consumer sense for, for ordinary Australians, there's been a very big boost to our social welfare system and the different payments that are available to help people get through this crisis. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Kelly. And uh, what about your firm? Are your firm is ready to assist companies that are facing COVID-19 and the related difficulties in relation to privacy? Yes, uh, McPherson Kelly is a full service commercial law firm. So we're definitely seeing a lot of questions and concerns from businesses at the moment in relation to their employees and their staffing issues, but also for things like can they cancel their contracts on grounds of force majeure or for frustration? 
Um, what if they're tied into particular set delivery dates for products and now they can't receive those products? So we're dealing with a lot of those uh, day-to-day business issues. Um, not so many issues in the privacy sense as yet, but I do think that some of those questions will start to come soon. Um, one thing that I would like to share with everybody is that McPherson Kelly has put together a website that has got some frequently asked questions and they're basically the questions that our clients are asking us. We're updating those uh, daily as we get different questions and get further into our COVID-19 experience. So I'd encourage um, any viewers of this to take a look at the questions and answers and see if they can provide some assistance. Yes, also as at Privacy Rules, we are trying to collect uh, all similar materials from your and other firms together so that people can have the same FAQ from you know a worldwide perspective. I think this is uh, very useful because it's, uh, you can uh, immediately have an idea in that country to how to, on how to face the problem. And, uh, and uh, what I wanted to ask you is also uh, related to the health information. Um, how does your country handle health information in, in this time? at the moment, it's business as usual in relation to privacy here for us. Um, and so obviously, with questions about uh, COVID-19, a lot of businesses are asking their staff and their customers about, you know, do they have a fever? Have they been overseas in the last 14 days? So they're obviously starting to collect some of that health information. In Australia, we've got two regimes that really apply in, in this respect. So one is our Federal Privacy Act, and the other is our state-based health uh, information acts that we have as well. And so really at the moment, it is just business as usual, as I said. Um, our privacy officer and our privacy commission is really just expecting businesses to collect the minimum amount of information that they need to only share that information with the people who need to know it. So that's really just in line with the general obligations that businesses have here in Australia. What we are also starting to see, though, is that as more businesses are moving online and as people are working from home, security issues for the information that is being shared is becoming a, a bigger issue here as well. Definitely, definitely. That's, that's another big issue that is shared with, among other members and, and other countries, the fact that everything is completely changed, the way of working, and many people are starting working from home using maybe their own devices and not having the same security uh, that they may have inside their phone, inside their, their companies, and that's another big uh, topic. And uh, um, let's speak a bit about of the future. Uh, what do you think it may, might be uh, next in Australia's way to, to, to respond to COVID-19? Yeah, it's difficult to say really at the moment, things are moving very, very quickly. And uh, there, I think that we will move to a, a bigger lockdown very shortly. Um, so I think that there will be a phase two of the distancing measures that are being put in place here for us. Um, privacy wise, I think that there will also be a broadening of the privacy requirements. And so our commissioner here is starting to put together some more information to assist businesses to comply with their privacy obligations when they're dealing with their staff and with their customers as well. Um, one thing that has also been mentioned very briefly, no movement on it yet, is whether Australia might move to a tracking sort of device in relation to being able to monitor who's been in contact with COVID cases, which is, I think, uh, what has occurred in Singapore. So uh, it's been briefly mentioned, uh, but I expect that that might occur too. Yes, that's another big topic and was my next question, so you anticipated me. Um, it, it was a, a big issue also for our Asian uh, colleagues. We, we just released a webinar with them uh, and, uh, you know, in South Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong, they and China, for example, there's, they used this kind of tracking um, instruments, but there were lots of privacy issues related to, to that use. But of course, they, they, we need to have the correct balance between you know, the, the individual interest and the public interest. Uh, and, and every country will find the best way probably to, to handle it. But it's definitely a useful and a relevant discussion. Yeah, that's right. There's no doubt that a, a monitoring or a tracking type system will will throw up huge privacy issues in amongst our privacy framework here. Um, but I think that our regulators in that space will really rely on the exception that we have in our privacy rules where information can be shared for the purposes of public health and safety. So I think that's where they'll focus that. 
Definitely, definitely. So, Kelly, thank you very much for giving us this very specific overview on what's happening there. I would like to thank also our listeners for being with us today, and I invite them to watch Privacy Rules, where we are creating this team of COVID response experts from all over the world. Thank you very much, Alessandro, and I wish all of our listeners some good health and good cheer. <laughs>